Hey, it's Alexa. When I was a beginner, the JavaScript ecosystem was overwhelming. For a long time, I didn't know why Node.js was different from the JavaScript on the web. I never knew that console.log wasn't actually part of the JavaScript programming language, and I remember being confused as to why people were using a new syntax called ES6 to do their imports instead of the require syntax that I was used to. Being aware of the different environments, runtimes, and engines would have helped me understand the problems I was running into. So I went and did a deep dive into JavaScript, Node.js, and how it all works. So the first thing to start with is the JavaScript language itself. The formal name for JavaScript is ECMA script. The ECMA foundation are the people who make the language rules and add new features to the language itself. So they basically write a long document that's a specification that outlines all the requirements for someone to actually call a language JavaScript. You'll often hear people say, I'm familiar with the ES6 syntax. ES stands for ECMA script, and what they're referencing is the 2015 version of JavaScript, and that's the version where they added in spread operators, destructuring, the dot map function, and new imports or exports. But we can't really do anything with just a programming language. We need somewhere for it to run and execute. So that leads us to the question, where do we find JavaScript? The short answer is everywhere, but primarily on web browsers, which is referred to as client side or front end, and also on the back end, which is on the server, and that's where you get Node.js. Now, you can install Node.js on any machine running Linux, Mac, or Windows, and essentially any computing device out there runs one of those operating systems, so you can run JavaScript anywhere. So, what are the differences between these two environments? On the client side, JavaScript executes on a web browser, and because you're on the web browser, you get special browser-specific features, and these are called JavaScript web APIs. One that you're probably familiar with if you've done front-end development is the DOM API, and this is a way to represent the structure of an HTML web page. The DOM API lets you create update and add UI elements to a web page using JavaScript. It's not part of the JavaScript programming language because it's not in the ECMA script specification, and it wouldn't make sense to be because it's specific to the browser environment. Now, on the server side, Node.js is the one running JavaScript and Node.js has a standard library, or it's also called their built-in modules, that add a bunch of APIs that would be useful in server-side development. So for example, the file system module lets you navigate directories, create new files, change them, and that's all very server-oriented stuff. You don't really do that on a web browser. And likewise, you won't find the DOM API in Node.js because on the server you're not dealing with user interfaces. That's a browser-specific feature. So how do NPM packages play into all of this? NPM packages can be installed on the web and on the server. You just have to make sure they work in that given environment. And it'll usually say that on the NPM package page. If an NPM package uses the DOM API, then you won't be able to use it in Node.js on the server because Node doesn't have access to the DOM API. It's only on the browser. Now, the two environments, which are the browser and Node.js are actually more similar than you think. And this is where we can talk about runtimes. So a runtime is an environment in which a program runs. And for JavaScript, it's a place where a program is created and it's also meant to execute in that environment as well. So that means if you're creating a Node.js app, you have to install Node.js in your development environment to create that app. And if you want to deploy that app to production, whatever server you're using to run that app needs to have Node.js installed on it because that is how it runs the JavaScript code. You can't just put JavaScript code on a machine and the machine will know how to run it. You need that runtime. And runtimes handle things like memory management, how the program accesses variables, and interfacing with the 
operating system. So typically, the lower level the language, the less runtime you'll have. For instance, C doesn't really have a runtime because it's meant to be compiled to assembly and executed directly on the hardware. JavaScript, on the other hand, is a high-level programming language, and we don't want to be concerned with memory management. So the trade-off is that we have to install Node.js to do that memory management for us. Now, this also brings us to the discussion of engines. Engines are part of these runtimes, so browsers and Node.js, and they basically analyze and prepare code for execution. So browsers will have their own JavaScript engines as well as Node.js. Chrome uses the JavaScript engine called V8, there's also other ones for other browsers, so Firefox uses SpiderMonkey Engine, and Safari uses JavaScript Core. And these are all just different implementations of engines that pretty much do the same thing. There may be some different performances amongst all of these engines, and also some features of JavaScript may not be supported by certain engines, and that's where you'll have to go into the MDM docs and see if the specific browser supports a certain function or API. And if it doesn't, it's probably because their engine doesn't know how to handle it. On the server side, we have Node.js as a runtime, and Node.js actually uses the same engine as Chrome, which is V8. Node.js isn't just a engine though, there's also some C and C++ code that goes into Node that deals with the memory management and stuff. Now, sort of recently, there have been a few more runtimes on the server that have emerged, like Dino, which is built off of Node.js, but it's actually implemented in Rust instead of C and C++, but it still uses the V8 engine, and also Bun which is powered by a different engine, JavaScript Core Engine, which is what Safari uses, and it's built entirely from scratch using this newish programming language called Zig. And because of this, there's actually really great performance with Bun, and there's also some performance boosts with Dino too, but not as much as Bun. Now, I'm not going to get too deep into these engines and runtimes because this is very complicated stuff. And as a web developer, you don't necessarily need to know all that. Of course, it's very interesting and I might do a video on it if you guys would appreciate that. But having a basic understanding of the JavaScript ecosystem definitely would have helped me as a beginner web developer. For a long time, I didn't know why I couldn't use fetch in Node.js. And it was because fetch was a web API at the time and Node didn't have a built-in module that could do the same thing. But now in Node.js 18, they actually have a native fetch, so that problem's kind of solved. But the point is, I didn't know why it was a problem. And hopefully this helped you understand some of those problems you're running into with your code. So hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next